Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 8, Division 1, Subsection A, UG 32. Example calculation of, thickness of, ellipsoidal head. We have, all these courses available, on our Thinkific platform. To learn, more about these courses, register with the link given, in the description. So some data, if you have calculator with you, I'll recommend do the calculation parallelly. So material construction, we have taken as a 5.6 grade 70. Internal pressure 2 MPa, design temperature 250 degrees Celsius. ID is 2000. Tan to tan length is 3000. Okay. Corrosion allowance 3 mm. There is also a static head if you see here. And the fluid is with specific gravity of 0.9. At that temperature, my allowable stress will be 138 because we know that till 250, there is no variation in allowable for SA516. Okay, so we don't have to even refer the table. Joint efficiency, we are taking one. Depth of liquid, one meter. That H dash value is one meter. So, what will be my first step, guys? What will be my first step? to calculate the static head, absolutely right. Because once the static head is there, that we can do the thickness calculation. So first, coincident pressure, why that is required in Manchu? There's only one pressure which we have given and that is the design pressure. So normally you don't have to, unless there are multiple chambers, we don't have to do that. Yes, if you are saying adding static head, then it's absolutely right. So we have to find out design pressure plus static head. It's simple calculation. Rho GH. Okay. So rho is the density of that liquid. G 9.81 gravitational acceleration and the height. Okay. So if I use that, I'll get the Static head as 8829 Newton per meter square. What is that? What is Newton per meter square? We generally never write, yes, never write pressure in terms of Newton per meter, specifically in design. So Newton per meter square is actually Pascal. Even Pascal is a very uh, small unit for pressure. That is the reason we write MPA. We generally use MPA when we do, when we talk about pressure, because MPA is more meaningful when we talk about it. Otherwise, we'll have to write big, big values for pressure if we write in terms of Pascal. So once I have that static head, I've added that to the internal pressure. Yes, Subham, absolutely right. 2.009. MPA will become my internal pressure. Once I have that internal pressure, I'll calculate the depth. Depth is nothing but ID divided by 4. Be careful of using that corrosion allowance. Okay. So 503. Now we can use this appendix 1 dash 4 formula to calculate. Okay. So other values, P is clear. Diameter is already given. Remember to add corrosion lines here also while calculating the diameter. 2 is already there. 138 is the allowable. Okay, these terms I don't have to explain. Now, this K is what we need to calculate. So, K, we saw that it is 2 plus T by 2H. Now, let us give that value. Okay, so even though it was two is to one, okay, but because of corrosion lines, the K we got is 0.996. Now I can use 0.996 and do the thickness calculation. Hope you guys are following it. If any issue is there, let me know. A simple calculation, wherever something new is there, I'm just explaining. Okay. 
So thickness which I've got is 14.57. That will be the minimum required thickness even before adding the corrosion lines. So the next step will be to add the corrosion lines and get the minimum design thickness. Okay, so we have got minimum design thickness as 17.57. Now here the selection of nominal thickness comes because till here you are pretty sure now what the thickness I should select. Okay. So I'll have to do the reverse calculation. You know, like if I have 20 mm nominal thickness, then 10% thinning if happens, what will be my final thickness? So 20 mm, 10% is 2. So even 10% thinning happens, I'll get 18. So I think we can select 20 mm, right? So I'll write 20 mm because after thinning 18 is happening, I don't have to be worried about 18. I can use that 18 as a minimum, okay, to keep something in my pocket as a designer. So while specifying, I can specify as minimum thickness 18, nominal thickness 20. Are you guys clear? Okay, so this is how I'll write in the drawing, okay. Great. So this is where you know the knuckle where the thinning problem happens generally because this is the area of most fiber elongation. Okay. So this is the spinning process. Okay. Now, very good thing which I'll share with you, which you might be using but might not have been using also it's a very good thing about you no know, we always discuss about what thinning i should take okay and that is always based on assumption we don't have any solid thing to back it up as a designer we need backing up if you are making any assumption it should be based on very you know uh, good reference i agree right then we can share like if somebody is asking why you have taken only 10%. I need a strong backup. Now, here, if you see a very good backup is given in terms of thinning allowance, what thinning allowance I should have for a particular thickness. Okay, and that is given in Dennis Moss. So, Dennis Moss is a very good reference which you can use. So, if I have thickness of 3.1 to 1 inch what thinning allowance I should have if my diameter is less than 3.8, which will be most of the cases, no, 1.59. Okay. So now I have a very ready reference to take the thinning allowance. Great. So taking it forward. So again, we have denoted how you know, we have to do the selection. For thickness 3.17 to 38, we have 1.55. Okay. So this is how we can do. You know, now you will do. Earlier, what we should have done, 10% will just take and give. Now you can do like this. Now you have basis for 1.59. Okay. So these are very, very simple things. And you know, any pressure vessel will have dishes. 